Welcome to Python 3 Advanced 12, Decorators. In this video, we'll be looking at the complex idea of decorators. This topic can be confusing and it took me a little bit to get my head around the idea. Every video have all slideshows and code available in the description. So what are decorators? Decorators, as an abstraction, changes the behavior or adds features to a function. Decorators are a less known programming pattern, but has had influences in almost all programming languages. Really, a decorator is a fancy way of talking about overriding a function with a newer and better one. Before we tackle decorators head on, let's look at nesting functions. This will help us with understanding decorators. In Python, we can nest functions inside other functions. So we can break up our functions into smaller functions. But functions that are inside another function can only be used inside that function. It follows the same scope rules as the rest of Python. Another thing that will come in handy is that if you leave the parentheses off a function, it will act like a pointer to that function and we can store it inside a variable. If you watched my methods video from the intermediate series, you will remember that we can store methods to use later inside variables. We can also do that with functions. So here we have an example of a nested function. First we define a function and inside it we create a variable called x and then set it to hello world. Then we define a second function inside it, in which we print out the value of x. But now we do something sneaky. Back inside the first function, we return the second function. Here we pass it back to where the first function was called from. So I pose the question, does the x go out of scope when the second function is returned? Does it disappear? Well in fact, Python has a feature called function closure. This is where the power of nesting functions comes in. Whenever a function is defined in a non-global space, that is anything inside a function or a method, Python takes a snapshot of what all the variables and values were at the time of definition. You can even test if a function is storing any values by calling the closure attribute of a function. So now we can finally get to decorators. A decorator is just like the example we made before, except instead of printing out the value of x, we modify or add to the function. Here, we have the original structure of our nested functions. However, this time we pass in a function as a parameter. This is how decorators are born. In this simple example, we pass in a function as old func. Then inside our second function, which will be the one we return back to overwrite the original function, we get what the result of old func would have been and then add one to the result and return that instead. On the third last line, we return second back to where we called this function from. These last two lines are an important part of piecing this all together. We create a new variable and store the result of the first function, passing in some function we want to overwrite. Then, we get the result of our new function. We can then run our new function and get the modified final result. Even just explaining this now, I understand it can be confusing. I just can't think of a better way to explain it. Hopefully, these colors help your understanding of what's going on. Let's give it a go and try writing a simple decorator. We'll write a function decorator to check if a file exists before we try and read from it, rather than handling it with a try catch. Let's call the file existdec.py. Alright, so over here in PyCharm, I've got my file already opened and ready. So first thing you want to do is import OS, because we're going to be checking if a file exists. And we're going to define our decorator function, so we'll call it exists. So def exists and it's going to take the old func as a parameter. And then inside we're going to create our inside function. So def inside. And that's going to take a file name. So that's going to be the file name of the file we're checking for. So any function that uses this decorator needs to provide a file name. All right, so if, open brackets, the os.path.exists, and the file name that we passed in. So if it exists, then we're going to run the old function with the file name. Else, if it doesn't exist, then we're going to print out, uh, let's print out, say, uh, the file does not exist. Alright, so that's our in fun inside function done. 
Now in our exists function, we're going to return our inside. All right, so we've created our decorator now. We need to create our function that's going to be decorated. So let's def, we'll call it a output line. And it's going to have the uh, in file, so the file name. And then we're going to with open and we'll open up the in file as f. Then we're going to print f, oops, print f dot read lines. All right. So we're reading the lines out of the file that we open up. All right, so now that we've created our function we want to decorate, we can create our decorated function. So let's create a variable called func. And that's going to equal exists with our output line function passed in. So now we've got our decorated function, we can start using it. So func and let's do something that works first. So I know definitely in this directory that the exist deck.py file, so this file that we're working on at the moment currently exists. And let's do another one that doesn't exist. So I know that say uh, test.py doesn't exist in this directory. So that should return the file does not exist. All right, so let's save this and run. So we come up to top, run. And when we run it, we get all of the lines printed out of our code file because it did, it did actually exist. And on our second line, we have the file does not exist because it was unable to find the second one. Cool. But the only downside to this currently is that we've got three lines just to use our decorator function. And really, we only want to use the one. So what we can do instead is instead of having to reuse this whole sort of section here, we can just put at the top of our decorated function that we want to decorate at exists. And what that's telling it is to decorate this function with the exist decorator. So the one that we've created up here. And then we can remove this line down the bottom here. And instead of our func, where you can just call our function, so output line, and out put line. And when we run this, we'll get the same output. So save that, run, and we get everything printed out from this file, and also the file does not exist for our test file. Cool. Sometimes, well actually many times, we want to take unknown amounts of parameters into our decorators. If we want our decorators to be reusable, or want to share them with other people, we aren't always ready for what their function may look like. So if you've used Python much, you'll have probably heard of star args star star keyword args. The single star as a parameter means you are taking a tuple of arguments that could be used of any size. The double star lets you take a dictionary of named arguments that could be of any size. The standard is to use the words args and kw args but sometimes you may not be able to due to them already being defined, which we'll see in a later example. All right, let's build another simple decorator. This time, we'll just print out the parameters that are passed into the function we create. We'll call the file paramsdeck.py. All right, so over here in PyCharm, I've already got my file opened and ready. So the first thing we're gonna do is create our decorator. So def params, and we'll take in our old function. And then we're going to def inside our decorated function and star args, comma, star star kw args for our keyword arguments. And that will allow us to take as many arguments as we want in the function. And then what we're going to do is just print and we'll print out uh, params, colon, space, close quotes, and then comma, args, comma, kw args. So that'll print out all of the parameters that are passed into our function. And then what we're going to do is uh, return old func. 
and it's going to have the star args star star kw args take as many parameters as it likes and then inside of our params function we're going to return our inside function All right so oops. kind of created the parentheses on me all right so now that we've created our decorator what we can do is create a decorated function so let's use our at params and let's call create a function called malt so def malt and that's going to multiply an x and a y and we'll make it so that y has a default value of 10 if nothing is entered and then we're going to just print out, uh, say, x times y. So just something simple so we can see that it's working. All right, so now let's try running our function. So malt uh, for 4 should give us uh, 16. Uh, malt, let's say, just we'll put in a 3, should give us 12. Uh, actually, no, that will give us... 30 and our malt we'll do one more and we'll say that x equals 1 and that y equals 3 all right so now that we've we're using our function let's give it a shot so we'll save this file and we'll give it a run all right so we run our file we get params is 4 and 4 we get an output of 16, our params is 3, and the y is 10, so we get 30, and our params uh, uh, x, 1, oh, our keywords rather are x and 1, and y and 3, and we get the output of 3. Cool, so it's all working correctly. Alright, hopefully this is starting to click and you're getting a grip of the idea of decorators. Now let's step this up a level and add parameters to our decorators. This isn't talked about much but I feel it is one of the most exciting features decorators have to offer. We can pass parameters into our decorators and modify what the decorator does to the decorated function. Now, how might we do this? Well, we add another nested function, causing a chain of function returns. Now we return to our original nested function example, except this time we have three functions and the order works a little different. First is for our decorator function with parameters. Then we have our second function, which acts as the actual decorator for the incoming function. And then the third function is our decorated function that we are overriding with. The great thing is, we can also use these star args, star star keyword args, to take many parameters into our decorator. Once again, confusing, but hopefully the next example should make everything clear. Okay, let's build one more decorator that wraps strings in HTML tags ready for placing into a web page. We'll pass in the tags we want to wrap the result of a function in. A decorator will look something like add tags, open bracket, p, comma, b, close brackets, which will surround the result in bold and paragraph tags. Let's call it add tags deck dot pi. All right, so once again over here in PyCharm, and I'm going to start by creating my decorator. So def, and I'll call it add tag or add tags rather, and we're going to take star tags. So we're going to take multiple tags if, if necessary, or just one. And now we're going to define our decorator. So def, and we'll call it our decorator. And our decorator is going to take the old func, like usual. Better make that an uppercase F. And then we're going to have our def inside. And that's going to take star args, star star kw args, so that we can take functions of any size or any type, kind of depends what they're being fed into them. And what we're going to do is we're going to get our code out, is going to equal our old func. So we're going to run the function that we're wrapping and passing in star oops star args 
and star star kw args and for the tag in reversed so we're going to do it in reversed order reversed tags colon we're going to code equals and we're going to use a format string here so we're going to use a template of zero for the first tag or for the tag and then we're going to use a template for the actual string that we're wrapping as one and then we're going to use our closing template of zero so for the end tag and close that up and then we're going to dot format and we're going to pass in the tag for zero and the code for one all right so now that that's wrapped with each of our uh, tags we're going to return code and now we're going to return inside and finally after we return inside we're going to return the decorator all right so that's our decorator function written so what it's going to do is whenever we pass in tags in quotes it's going to wrap the result of the function in HTML tags all right so let's create a function let's say it's called def uh, my web well welcome welcome and it's going to take a name for example and we're going to use our at add tags decorator and we're going to pass in let's say pass in p it's going to be in a paragraph tag and we also want it to have italics and we also want it to be bold all right so we've got our tags that we want to add to the result and in our my web welcome let's do something like uh, we'll just return the string welcome uh, plus name and we'll say to my blog that's, that's something popular all right so we're welcoming whoever the name is to my blog all right so that's our function written let's try it out so we'll print uh, my web welcome and let's say draps is the person we want to welcome we're printing that out and let's give it a shot so we'll save that up and we'll run it run we're going to run add tags and we get our output. So our output is wrapped in P tags, then wrapped in italic tags and wrapped in bold tags. And we get welcome drops to my blog. Awesome. How cool is that? All right, just some final notes to keep in mind when working with decorators. Python provides a really neat module called functools that provides functions to aid in debugging decorators. As a decorator is an overridden function, the stack trace will be a little harder to analyze. Look into the wrap function. It's also interesting to know that you can build a decorator with a class as well, by overriding the underscore underscore call underscore underscore special method. So a decorator class would look like the following. The only thing to keep in mind is that you must pass in the function inside the init method, which is called when the decorated function is defined. Then implementing the call method will be called every time the decorated function is called, which could be really handy for separating special logic. That concludes our look at decorators. I hope you weren't confused for too long. Feel free to leave any questions in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Next, we'll be looking at Python C-Types module and using and interacting with dynamically linked libraries. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.